What's up everyone? It's Nick. I'm back with another video and before we begin Please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy my content because it really helps me out. It helps my channel grow and uh, You see the title right? We're here to talk about the NBA Finals. So yeah, congrats to the Heat on making it even though I'm a little late on this But okay, let's cue that intro and let's get going. Okay, so congrats to the Miami Heat on clinching the Eastern Conference. What a Cinderella story it's been. Did anyone actually think going into this season that the Miami Heat would represent the Eastern Conference in the NBA Finals? I certainly didn't, and nobody I know actually did. And even going into the bubble, that didn't sound like a realistic thought. The only teams that any of us really thought could make it out of the East were the Milwaukee Bucks and Boston Celtics and Maybe the Raptors just, I didn't think the Raptors quite had the star power to be able to do it because I didn't think Pascal ever was as good as advertised, but alright, let's stick to the subject. We're here to talk about the Heat, NBA Finals, so just to keep that part short. So kudos to Pat Riley for finding all these diamonds in the rough, for constructing this roster with Jimmy Butler who was looked at as a cancer in the locker room. Great player, but not a good team player. That's what the narrative was around him. And also for Eric Spolstra, going from video assistant to advanced scout and director of scouting while maintaining his role as an assistant to Pat Riley. Later on, Stan Van Gundy before Pat Riley again. He's had quite an NBA journey for someone who's never actually played a single game in the NBA. And now, he is not just one of the best coaches right now, Maybe even the best you can actually make that argument in my opinion. He is one of the all-time great coaches. Yes, I said it. One of the all-time great coaches. And also back to Pat Riley. How he decided to not rebuild. To do the best with what they have. And try to bring in the pieces. Despite no longer having LeBron James the best player in the world. Then even after Chris Bosh was dealing with blood clots. And was forced to retire abruptly. Even though he was showing that he could still play before the blood clots ruined his career. And even after Dwayne Wade left in free agency, they did bring him back while he was on his last legs. Yeah, we will talk about all the diamonds in the rough that they have now because they got a lot of them. And it's a lot of respect to Pat Riley to be able to bring those guys in. And also for Eric Spolstra to be able to do what he's done with this team. Even though they don't have a quote-unquote superstar, I don't know if I'd call Jimmy Butler a superstar star but definitely an all-star and a perennial all-star and a very good player a great player but i also don't really want to stretch the definition of a superstar but nonetheless jimmy butler a great player he definitely deserves that respect and yeah i'm going to talk about him first i'm going to talk about the other players later but first jimmy butler we can't say it enough how much this man is owed an apology. He was looked at as someone who's, although talented, just not a good presence to have in the locker room, but that narrative is not true at all, and this year is 100% proof of that. When he went to Miami, that was looked at as questionable because they really have a team that can actually make the playoffs because they didn't make the playoffs last year. Fun fact, by the way, this is the first time ever that the finals are featuring two teams that did not make the playoffs last year. And the Miami Heat, they didn't even have very high expectations going into the season. So for Jimmy Butler to go to Miami of all places when he was playing alongside All-Stars and Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, like, what are you doing, bro? But you know what, though? Jimmy Butler was right. The Sixers have a really incompetent front office. Brett Brown's not a good coach. And... He may be better than Jim Boylan, but that's not something to be proud of because Jim Boylan is the worst coach in NBA history. That's like congratulating Steve Urkel for not setting that science lab on fire for once. The one time he was actually innocent of property damage and Laura was his lawyer. If you watch Family Matters or if you watched it as a kid growing up, if you're one of those older people, yeah, you remember that episode, right? Or that time... <laughs> At the Clippers game when he won a million dollars for hitting a half-court shot only to lose it all by throwing the ball at the scoreboard and and only getting back four dollars and 38 cents it's kind of like congratulating Steve Urkel for that it's not something to be proud of now I was about to call Elton Brand the worst GM in the NBA 
And yes, their front office decisions are terrible, which I plan on talking about at some point, but actually I hear that their executive vice president of basketball operations, Alex Rucker, has actually been heavily involved in, with the behind the scenes in these awful moves that the Sixers have made. But hey, take it for what you will. And since I brought up Jim Boylan, so we gotta talk about the Bulls because that's where Jimmy Butler started his NBA career, where he broke out into a perennial all-star, and was keeping a Bulls team afloat when Derrick Rose was dealing with all those knee injuries. So where have they ever gotten since they traded Jimmy Butler? Yes, Zach Levine is a very good player. Really, where has he gotten the Bulls? It's not entirely his fault because yeah, Jim Boylan's a trash coach. But still, even if they had a competent head coach, I don't think Zach Levine is any closer to being a superstar than Jimmy Butler is. Like not even a little bit actually. And don't get me wrong, Zach Levine's a very good player, just he hasn't proven to be someone you can build a championship team around. Although, if the Bulls had a competent coach, they may have made the playoffs this year, but oh well, we're st sticking to Jimmy Butler for now. So then, on to Minnesota, where they made it to the playoffs for the first time since 2004 in his only full season there. But then, there were internal problems, him not happy with Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns not having a winning mentality, and that led to Jimmy Butler getting traded to Philly for Robert Covington and Dario Saric. If there are any more details involved in that that I'm just not remembering right now, you can feel free to remind me, because those are just the details I do remember. And Jimmy Butler honestly wasn't really the best fit, considering he was playing next to a guard who doesn't shoot the ball, and Jimmy Butler is not a three-point shooter himself, Although Jimmy Butler was the second best passer in that starting five, although Robert Covington and Dario Saric provide a lot more floor spacing. But in the Sixers defense, Saric was not shooting the ball well at all at the time of the trade. And Jimmy Butler, yes, he did make them look a lot better on paper. Although, they actually lost one more game that season than they won the previous year and in the playoffs Jimmy Butler had to do a lot while Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid were standing and watching and all right they did get unlucky at the end though they lost in game seven on a really lucky shot by Kawhi Leonard but then after Jimmy Butler left they've only gotten worse and their future does not look good right now I mean yes there's rumors about them trading for James Harden we'll see what happens Although, honestly, I think that this process got botched, and yeah, like I said, I'm going to talk about that later. And Jimmy Butler was right. He wanted to play for a more confident organization. The Heat have an all-time great GM in Pat Riley and an all-time great head coach in Eric Spolstra. And in Miami, the culture is perfect for him. That no bull culture in Miami is absolutely perfect for Jimmy Butler because that's a, how Jimmy Butler goes about his business, that he doesn't around and he demands the best out of you and in Miami you can yell at each other and not hurt anyone's feelings and in fact even though they may yet be tough on each other at times you know that's the kind of guy that Jimmy Butler is as a teammate at the end of the day though he's actually a great teammate the whole narrative that he isn't a good teammate is completely false the way this team is constructed Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo guys who are not threats from three but they're great slashers and Jimmy Butler, at least he can hit the mid-range shot, just not so good from three. But they're surrounded by sharpshooters on that team. And the guys like Duncan Robinson, Goran Dragic, Jay Crowder, Tyler Hero, guys like them. Oh, Jay Crowder, he hasn't, he's been kind of up and down shooting the three ball in the playoffs. We'll talk about that pretty soon. But anyways, this has been perfect for Jimmy Butler, definitely in terms of personality. And even with two guys who aren't three-point shooters and him and Adebayo as the two best players on the team. Eric Spolster is a great coach and he's actually able to make it work. Brett Brown, he, even with what he had, even with a lot of star power, he didn't do that. So yes, Jimmy Butler was right. In fact, speaking of Jimmy Butler in Philly, he and Joel Embiid are still tight actually. And Jimmy Butler even appeared on JJ Reddick's podcast pretty recently and they agreed that Brett Brown was the problem not the actual guys on the team. And also how in Miami, Jimmy Butler's been sticking up for his teammates when Bam Adebayo had a bad game five and he took the blame, he felt like he let his teammates down. Jimmy Butler came in and said, uh-uh, no, that's my fault. I should have played better. To be able to have a teammate's back like that, that's not something the selfish players do. 
And also after Tyler Hero had that 37 point outburst in game four, and also Jimmy Butler wore Tyler Hero's high school jersey to practice the next day. And during the uh, conference finals victory celebration, Jimmy Butler was wearing Tyler Hero's jersey. So yeah, it's clear that these guys get along very well. You know what else? Believe it or not, Goran Dragic has actually had a higher usage percentage than Jimmy Butler in the playoffs and has been their leading scorer. Does Jimmy Butler have a problem with it? No, not at all. Yeah, because he's selfish, right? And in fact, Jimmy Butler even gave Goran Dragic a shout out on Instagram in Goran Dragic's native language, Slovenian. You know what else he's done with Goran Dragic in the bubble? Or let's also take a look at some of his Instagram posts. So yeah, we see him calling Bam out of bio, the heart and soul of the team. Yeah, great teammate. Sure, he may be tough on guys, but clearly he's getting along with these guys well, and clearly, you know, these guys are like a family. So once again, Jimmy Butler, let's all say it together, we're so sorry. Now on to Bam out of bio, a 6'9 center, all defensive second team. Although not a threat from three, he's athletic, a great slasher, excellent health defender, was a big reason for slowing down Giannis in the second round against the Bucks. Although also Mike Budenholzer all slowed down Giannis himself by not adjusting. You can expect to see him take on the assignment of LeBron at times and also Anthony Davis at times. You know that's no easy task at all. But Bam out of bio, he's up for that challenge. Will he succeed in that when going up for that challenge? As a Laker fan, I hope not. Now I have nothing against the guy whatsoever, but I gotta root for my team. So no, I hope he doesn't have success. <laughs> going up for that challenge. In fact, D'Angelo Russell had some really high praise for him as well. Mike Corzambo made a video on this and I'll give a link to that in the description. And also, I like Mike Corzambo's comparison of a faster and better scoring version of Draymond Green. I like that comparison a lot because much like Draymond Green, very high IQ defender, very versatile, and back in the day, I was calling Draymond Green the heart and soul of the Warriors, even though Steph and Clay were the stars of the team. And Bam Adebayo is looked at the looked at as the uh, heart and soul of the Heat. And an interesting stat that Mike Corzamba brought up as well: when Bam was on the court, the Heat outscored the Celtics by two and a half points per 100 possessions. And when Bam was off the court, the Heat got outscored by the Celtics by 5.5 points per 100 possessions. Now he certainly isn't a point center like Jokic. Jokic is a way better passer, but. Bam Adebayo certainly isn't a bad passer himself. He honestly does scare me a little bit knowing he'll guard Anthony Davis a lot and despite Anthony Davis' side advantage, and while yes, I do expect AD to get his buckets, and just so you see what I'm wearing, but also, I gotta give Bam Adebayo his credit where it's due. I know he's not afraid of someone like Anthony Davis. But you know what else though about Anthony Davis? Like, while Bam Adebayo did slow down Giannis quite a bit, Anthony Davis' offensive skill set isn't nearly as limited as Giannis's. I'm not even being biased, that's just something that everybody knows. And also, with LeBron setting him up, that's gonna get, get AD his buckets. AD, yeah, Bam is a pretty damn good player. I think you know that, but let's go. Go get your buckets, alright? And also, D up like the defensive player of the year runner-up that you've been this season. And honestly, I would have rather have seen him go up against Daniel Thice, but Bam it is, so just gotta do your thing, AD. And also speaking of Bam out of bio, definitely an upgrade from Hassan Whiteside, right? I think we can all agree on that. Now, on to Duncan Robinson. Aside from having the GOAT name, he had quite a journey to the NBA, going from D3 to Michigan, an undrafted rookie. Didn't play much last year, this year broke out as a big time sharpshooter, one of the most deadly three point shooters in the league. And this year in the playoffs, he's had some really good and some really bad games, but even at his worst, which has been bad, you still don't ever want to drop cover on him. That goes without saying, right? Goran Dragic, the team's leading scorer in these playoffs, who many of you may have forgotten he was an all star two seasons ago or that he was Steve Nash's backup when he first came into the league. How many people remember that? Or when he was on the Rockets before James Harden was there. But it is Miami where he's found a home, and like I mentioned before, he is leading the team in scoring in these playoffs. Last year he was hurt, but this year he was the best scorer off the bench for them. He became a starter for the playoffs and sure has thrived as a starter. 
and he can even create his own three off the dribble too. It feels strange knowing that Kendrick Nunn was shining as an undrafted rookie and even finished second in rookie of the year voting, yet he hasn't seen much action in the playoffs with Goran Dragic taking his starting spot, but it certainly hasn't been questionable at all. It's worked beautifully for the Miami Heat. Tyler Hero. And then a hero lies in you. Okay, I'm not a singer. <laughs> that was dumb, but whatever. I'll put that in there. But Tyler Hero, the 13th pick in the draft, came off the bench all season. But bold move by Eric Spolster to give him the green light in the playoffs, like he has. He did have a bad game too against Boston, but boy, since that bad game too, he scored 23 points per game on 56% from the field. Oh my. And I saw a list of other notable shooting guards drafted with the 13th pick not that long ago with Tyler Hero on it. And of course, there was Kobe on it, Devin Booker, Donovan Mitchell. And that's not to say that he's actually on those guys' levels yet. Obviously not Kobe, don't even get me started there. But still, Tyler Hero's had a remarkable playoff run. Someone that I just had to talk about. He's been another unsung hero for the Heat, but he's not the best ball handler. And I think that playoff Rondo, Alex Caruso, maybe even sometimes Danny Green and KCP if they ever have to guard him. I think that they're gonna hound him and they're gonna expose the fact that he's not a great ball handler. Well, actually, I don't know if I should say expose because I think it's something that if we watch closely, we know. But I think that it's something that's gonna be an issue for Tyler Hero in the finals. We'll see how it goes. But I definitely do think though that what he's done in the playoffs so far already is truly remarkable and I think that he does have a bright future in this league. Andre Iguodala now making his sixth straight trip to the finals. We know 2015 finals MVP. I give him credit for how well he defended LeBron and those looking at the box score to say that no he didn't, you're just being lazy. If you actually watch the games, you'd know that when Iggy was not the only one who guarded LeBron, and when Iggy was on him, he had LeBron in handcuffs, but okay, we're not really here to talk about that, just wanted to put that out there. But even with that said, I do still think that Steph was robbed of the finals MVP. Stop looking at just game two, because other than that one game, he had a great series, but okay, we're talking about now, not the 2015 NBA Finals, I uh, just had to say that stuff for now. But anyways, Iggy, as we know, a seasoned vet, multi-time -time NBA champion, three-time NBA champion, and also very selfless. Even though he was once an all-star, he was willing to come off the bench for the Warriors, and that was for the better of the team. Game six against the Celtics, though, even though we know him to not be a good shooter, five for five from three, bro. Who would have expected that from Andre Iguodala to go 5 for 5 from 3 in a playoff game? In the clincher too! And it's definitely safe to say that the Heat won that trade with the Grizzlies to bring him in, getting rid of Justice Winslow and James Johnson's bad contract. And here Iggy is, also a key bench player for the Heat in this uh, Cinderella story. Jay Crowder, man, don't you Celtics fans feel bitter? Kelly Olynyk too. Especially knowing Jay Crowder was part of that Isaiah Thomas Kyrie Irving trade and he and Olenek make it to the finals before your team does. Jay Crowder shot the three really well during the regular season after being horrid from three the year before. He was shooting the three really well in the playoffs for the most part until game one of the conference finals. Even before that he had a few games where he didn't shoot the three so well but his percentage the first two rounds really good just not so much in the conference finals. We'll see how he does in the finals, but hey, we know he's been another integral part of this team. Okay, with all this said, my praise for the Miami Heat ends right here, at least for now. Because this run ends here. You guys have been amazing, gone far beyond our expectations, but sorry. Go Lakers. Even without bias, yes, the Heat have more depth from top to bottom, but the Lakers have more star power in LeBron James and Anthony Davis. I honestly think that that's going to be what's going to prevail. And also, LeBron is LeBron, and I don't think he's going to allow this team to lose. That's just how I feel right now. Take it for what you will, but that's what I honestly think. I know the Miami Heat won't agree with this. I definitely respect them for not considering themselves underdogs, even though the rest of the world considers them underdogs, so respect for that. But still, I think it'll be a hard-fought series, but the Lakers come out on top. I predicted Lakers in six the first three rounds. I think I should roll with that again because I've had a good thing going with that. 
but I do know that the heat are not going to go down easily. So that's the end of this video. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.